Today we have something very special for you on this episode of Making the Cut. That is plunging straight in. Completely automated, yes. no human hands until you take yeah, it out correct. of the box. I actually don't know, this is late. Yes, it's a Took 20. me a second. It's really remarkable how much you must know to be able to do that. I've been doing it for a minute. So. <laughs> for just a couple of minutes. We are here at Iskar in North Carolina to check out their tech center, to check out their education center, to check out their showroom. We're gonna be seeing some of the craziest Iskar tools that are available on the market today, and I can't wait to show you. Let's go take a look. A little background on ISCAR for those who don't know, ISCAR actually is a bit of an acronym or a smash together name of Israeli Carbide. Yeah, yeah, the company uh, was founded in 1952 in Israel in a little garage uh, and it's progressed from there in uh, the 70s. It came out with its parting system that kind of revolutionized uh, parting off applications and turning and the company's you know, just had innovation after innovation from there, whether it's on the turning side, the milling side, the hole making side. and and uh, you know, it's grown into uh, quite an enterprise. And the other thing that I found really interesting about this that I just heard on my way in here, some of these inserts are actually not touched by people until the person takes them out on the customer's end. You bet, you bet. Tell me about that, how is that possible? It's uh, highly automated systems. You know, one of the things that ISCAR prides itself on is uh, automated manufacturing facilities. If you were to walk into an ISCAR uh, factory, you would see a lot of robotics, uh, you know, including robots that are traveling around the floor, uh, as well as the robotics that's part of like, you know, picking and selecting and moving items around. So uh, it's very uh, interesting when you see it, but yeah, uh, an insert will go from uh, pressing to sintering to coating to inspection, to packaging, and it'll never be touched by human hands. Completely automated, yes. no human hands until you take yeah, it out of correct. the box. Yeah. I found that absolutely crazy. You guys don't just do milling. I mean, we definitely know that Iskar was basically founded on tools like these, part off tools. Yeah, parting and turning. The idea was to create an interchangeable or replaceable blade. It's got multiple stations on it, but because we use this system, you've got this robust mounting of the blade it's, it's taken that parting operation to the next level where you can be really aggressive with feed rates, but yet we maintain surface finish, we maintain straightness, and we can part off and get good tool life and, and really be productive in that operation. And the one thing that's really appealing about, to, about this to a shop like mine, you know, small job shop, we don't keep a huge selection of replacements. This way, if I, you know, every so often a part off is gonna break, if I wipe out this pocket, I can flip it around and keep yeah. going, yeah. have time to order another one before, you know, if I have a standard style, I could be down if I don't have a replacement on the shelf. So. Especially the other thing I'll point out is when you have so much metal behind the carbide there, like you said, that's when you can really drive that thing yeah. home. Yeah, it's all about rigidity in manufacturing or machining, right? Absolutely. Maybe. These are extremely popular, I know that much. It all started with the original cam drill, and so that was the first ISCAR uh, iteration of the interchangeable or replaceable head system. You're talking about a system with different length to diameter ratios. You're talking about a system that, depending on diameter, might have 11 different styles of head that you can put in there. So you can customize it to material. You can customize it to trying to reduce the number of tools that you have to use. For example, if you get eight times D and above, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'd say, okay, I need a pilot drill, maybe a one and a half times D starter hole, come back in with your longer drill. But if you use a, a convex shaped drilling head, the, the, the chisel point of the drill head sticks out, it helps it self center. And now you can use eight times D and 12 times D drilling bodies from the start because it's self centering and it, it's, it basically has a stabilizing effect while in the cut. Essentially it's drilling its yeah. own pilot hole ahead of the actual big Ex final exactly. operation. Yeah, it just helps stabilize the tool. You know, you think about drilling, you're only cutting with the tip of the tool. Why, why have a solid carbide drill if you don't need to? Yes, there's reasons why you do, but we're finding a lot of places to put in the interchangeable head technology. Very rarely are you really gonna want full carbide. This just really is a better cost savings. You don't have to replace yeah. the whole drill. It, it makes a lot more sense to me. 
I was told these are actually 3D printed. Yes, yes. So this is a, a, a pretty recently introduced product, our mini indexables. And whether it's for a 90 degree indexable insert or a, in this case, this is a fast feed type profile, we've been able to take the diameters down to uh, diameters that were only solid carbide before. Now we've got this additive technology that allows us to provide coolant through tooling mm -hmm. and down to diameters like six millimeter, eight millimeter, or quarter of an inch and uh, five sixteenths of an inch where we couldn't before. And due to that, having that same kind of cone fit that we're looking at, I'm guessing that's gonna be extremely repeatable in the machine. Definitely. Yeah, they, there'll be more variation in the indexable insert and the pocket of the insert itself than there will be in the, the multi-master connection there. The multi-master connection can be repeatable within, it's typically plus or minus eight tenths. Oof, so, yeah, that's pretty much good enough for anybody who's doing anything uh, Especially when you're using an indexable product for roughing operations. Now, I'm glad that I see these tools here, but the one thing I definitely want to see is these things make some chips. And I believe you have something for us here. Yeah, we do. Let's go over to the tech center where the machines are. Now, the one thing I'm seeing here, obviously, it kind of jumps out at you. The yellow floor, this seems to be an ISCAR thing. Yeah, it definitely is. If you go to an ISCAR manufacturing facility or other tech centers, you're usually going to see the yellow floor. It's a, it's a brand of you know, cleanliness. It, it's bright. It, it's just uh, it's a good environment to be in for manufacturing. So Now, what do we do here at the tech center? Okay, so we bring customers and and ISCAR employees here for training. The tech center with the machines, it allows us to come out and do the practical applications of the tools to kind of you know, kick the tires, test out what they can do, and push them to limits that you wouldn't want to do on your own shop floor, you know, whether it's to avoid scrapping a part or breaking a tool, but we like to come in here and, and really show what the tools can do on a machine. Because so. it's one of those really useful things for customers, at least from the way it sounds to me. If I'm running big on production right now, I want to try your tool out. I may not want to tear down my setup on that, see how the tool performs, do a test. It may just not be feasible. So here, you could do it for me. Oh, definitely. If we can, if we can match up closely the variables that we're dealing with uh, and be somewhat similar to what someone has going on on their shop floor, then we can come in and we can do some tool testing. We can try to reduce cycle time and look at what we can do for the customer here and then take it back to their shop floor and duplicate it uh, later on. Now, not only do you guys do tool tests here in the shop, you guys actually do application type stuff here and you have people that work full time here in this tech center. Yeah, definitely. We, uh, you know, on top of supporting the customer seminars that we put on here, doing tool runoffs, things like that, the next level is the customer who says, I've got this part, here's my prints, here's my 3D models. Can you have an engineering team look at this part and spec out all the tooling that would go with it? And maybe even up to and including providing programming support, whether it's through just simulation or even up to and including NC code. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, thanks now, for coming in. this is your domain back here. We've seen a lot of, you've got blades in here, you have mills in here, you have a Swiss machine in here. You program all of them. Correct. You have a setup in here right now. What are we gonna be looking at in here? So when we first got the machine, um, I had a gentleman come in and he was walking us through on how to set it up, program it, what have you, doing all of the initial application stuff with us. And so, on our sub-spindle side, we didn't have a pusher. Okay. So there is a push rod in there, but we didn't have anything to screw it into. Okay. <laughs> so what we did was, is I had some brass sitting over here, and so we just uh, wrote a program to make this push rod. If you don't have it, you make it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's gonna come in, it's gonna spot, um, drill, it's going to turn the front of the OD where the thread is at. Yep. It's gonna groove, um, then it's gonna thread. Then we're gonna turn back a couple more times because um, you know, with the switch you have to segment that a little bit of to, to, get your, to keep your rigidity. Um, and then mill some flats. Cool. 
um, and then we're gonna cut off. Let's see it. All right. These things are just absolutely fascinating to me because they move so quickly in such short distances. If you yeah. don't know what you're doing, like me, you get very frightened. <laughs> One of the worst things about them though is that the work envelope is so small that it's a mess sometimes trying to get in there and tighten wrenches and whatever, so or change an insert even. So that's turning on the sub spindle now. Main spindle. Well, that's considered the main spindle. Yep. Woo! And I actually have the, uh, on, our, on our milling tool here, I actually have the multi-master. Um, and what that is, is it basically just screws on. It's a head that just screws on. So, and the reason I wanted that in there is so, because of the ease of changing that out if I ever needed to. When you're in a tight, uh, yeah. tight squeeze area like that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, right now we're running all of this dry because it's brass. Typically, when you're using Iskar tooling on a job like this, would you run it dry? Um, no, no, um, I just, I didn't want to put oil in here and I just avoided putting the coolant in yet. Um, the it's water much based. nicer for filming as well. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So we are milling the flats. Yep. It's now turning it back even further, it looks like. Yes, and then it should cut off. When I first started in this business 35 years ago, um, I, I raved about Iskar cutoff tools then and grooving tools. So, um, it's, yeah. Now you're practicing what you preach. Exactly. And there's our finished part. That's what it looks like. What are we looking at here? So we were asked to do a, uh, a runoff of sorts for a customer um, so we could kind of gauge what our tool life would look like versus a competitor. And so they sent us some material, um, sent us a simple blueprint, and so we made a bunch of these parts. Now um, this ain't just aluminum though. This is a titanium. Very hard to machine, very hard on edges. You gotta know what you're doing to do this stuff. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So, um, so this part, however, is a lot shorter than what the end one is, but um, we just made it this length to get as much as we could for the bars that were sent to us. Because you were specifically testing certain operations on it, so it doesn't matter if it's the whole part. So what kind of operations were we testing okay. when we were looking at this part? So we're gonna face it, and we're gonna turn the front angle. Then I have a Penta insert tool there that um, basically roughs this backside out and then we have our cutoff tool here coming into part off. And that is that same four pocket cutoff tool? Yes. Interesting. So I'm running it slower, the rapid rate, just because I want us to be able to see everything. So right now we're facing that off? Yep. And now we're going to start that front angle. It's a 57 degree angle there on the front. We're feeding about eight thousandths per rev. And for, I'm not super familiar with turning aluminum, would that be considered a fairly heavy cut? Um, for turning, maybe not. Now, when I come in with this Penta tool here, the, our, our groover that roughs out that back angle, um, that one is pretty good. This is gonna be a pretty heavy cut. <laughs> that one's pretty good. You're gonna like that one. All right. Woo! That is plunging straight in. That is a very, very large groove very quickly. Now compared to the original way they were running these, you said you cut, half, you cut this cycle time in half. Well, I think their, their cycle time um, was, I believe, 72 seconds. And I got ours down to 50. With extended tool life. Yeah, and I doubled the tool life. That's absolutely insane. Now let's do our cutoff.
Again, that's that four-sided, super rigid, lots of metal behind the carbide in that tool. Mm -hmm. Clunk, and away we go. And there she is. There's our final part at size. Beautiful finish on that, ready to go. Yep. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much to everyone at ISCAR for having us down here. It has been incredible to check out this tax center and this whole facility. I'm expecting a lot of really crazy stuff to come out of that tax center. The issues that they're solving for customers, really, that's a service that I can't stress enough. If you have issues, I would definitely get in touch and see what they can do for you. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching. You take care.